last classes we have seen the equivalent circuit of a diode. Today we will be discussing about the rectifier circuit which is an important application of semiconductor diode. So basically what is a rectifier? The rectifier circuit is a circuit which rectifies AC voltage into DC voltage. Now in most electronic applications we will be requiring DC voltage that is constant voltage supply. Now in order to get constant DC voltage from the supplied AC voltage because most our in our homes we get AC supply which is power supply we get alternating current and so in order to get DC voltage level from AC we will have to use rectifier circuit where diode is used. So the DC power supply has different stages starting from an AC supply then it will be using a transformer to bring it to the desired level of AC voltage and then rectifier circuit to rectify the AC into unipolar voltage and then there will be filtering circuit to smoothen out the pulsating DC voltage which we get after rectification and then another regulator circuit will be there to finally keep it at a constant voltage level. So starting with an AC voltage, a steady DC voltage is obtained by rectifying first then filtering to DC level and finally regulating to obtain a desired fixed DC voltage. So if you consider in block diagram form, we have here first stage is transformer. This transformer will be getting the AC supply which will be given from the power supply at the rated frequency and in our household devices we have AC supply at 50 hertz. So this transformer is there to bring the level of this AC input to the desired level by transforming it. So voltage transformation is done. If we can step up or step down the voltage by adjusting the turns ratio in the transformer. Then this rectifier circuit will be having the diode which will be rectifying the AC voltage to an unipolar DC voltage and then this filtering circuit will be there. This is an extra circuit which will be required for smoothening out the pulsating DC and then finally a voltage regulator circuit will be there which regulates the voltage level even if the load varies. So finally this load that is the output circuit where we want to apply this DC voltage will be getting the DC voltage and this DC voltage as uh, desired it should be constant level voltage. For this rectifier circuit we use this the semiconductor diode which we have discussed earlier. So first of all let us discuss a half wave rectifier. This half wave rectifier circuit will be converting the AC voltage to a unipolar DC voltage but only one half of the input AC voltage will be available and in the other half we will get zero voltage. So if we now consider a half wave rectifier circuit, the circuit will be having a single diode as such shown in this diagram. So we have this input voltage which is AC and let us consider a sinusoidal voltage which is practically what we get in the power supply and there will be this resistance. The voltage available across this resistance is named as V0. So this voltage output voltage V0 will be used for a 
load. Now, in this circuit, if we consider this diode and this input voltage, we will first of all convert this diode to its equivalent model. Now, as we discussed earlier, it is piecewise linear model will be a constant voltage drop V D naught and the forward resistance average resistance R D. So, these two will be in series with the ideal diode. This ideal diode is just to show the direction of conduction of the current and this is the resistance across which we will be having the output voltage V naught. Now, this is an AC supply. So, it is in a complete time period T, it will have one positive half cycle and a negative half cycle. Now, whenever you have this V i greater than equal to this V d naught, that is the thresholding voltage, then the diode will conduct. That means, in the positive half cycle of the input AC voltage, we whenever we have input voltage greater than V d naught, this diode will be conducting and then the current will be flowing in this circuit. So, if we now find out the output voltage V naught, this output voltage is equal to the current flowing through this resistance R multiplied by the resistance R. So, what will be this current flowing in this circuit? So, we can find it out. This is V i minus this drop V d naught divided by the total resistance in this circuit R d plus R into this resistance R. So, this will be the voltage across this resistance. Now, separating this two terms which are combined by this negative that will be equal to R by R d plus R into V i minus R by R d plus R into V d naught. Now, practically in such type of circuits what we get is that the resistance is comparatively very, very high in comparison with this average resistance of the diode. Average resistance of the diode is in the order of a few ohms only and we can very well ignore this resistance in comparison with this resistance R, which is R is far bigger than R D. So, if that is the case, that is R D is uh, average resistance of the diode is very, very small as compared to R then the denominator in these two terms R d plus R can be approximately written as equal to capital R, because this whole term will be almost equal to capital R, since this is very R d is very small. And then this output voltage will have this expression as simply V i minus V d naught, because if we replace this R d plus capital R by capital R only, then these two cancel out in both of the terms. So, we get what? We get V naught equal to V i minus V d naught and this is nothing but the approximate equivalent circuit of this diode which we have discussed earlier that V d naught will be now here and this will be ignored, R d will be ignored. So, as R d is ignored it is nothing but the constant voltage drop model. So, we have that we can now assume that we are replacing this practical diode by its constant voltage drop model. So, assuming the constant voltage drop model we can now have this circuit is approximately we are getting a simplified circuit which will be having only the constant voltage drop V d naught of the diode. So, now when in the positive half cycle of the signal if we consider then as soon as this input voltage V i at any point if we consider the instantaneous voltage V i, 
whenever it is greater than in the positive half cycle whenever it is greater than V D naught the diode will start conducting. So, the voltage output V naught will be V i minus V D naught and in the negative half cycle whenever we get that it is less than 0 that means it is in the negative half cycle input voltage is negative and in the negative half cycle there will be no conduction in the diode. So, we will be getting 0 current and the current is 0 that is why the voltage V naught across R is also 0. So, in the negative half cycle we will be getting a 0 voltage and in the positive half cycle only we will be getting the output voltage V naught which is V i minus V d naught. So, if we now consider the input voltage and the output voltage V naught superimpose on each other then we get this type of character uh, curves I mean voltage waveforms where you can see here that the output voltage has a difference between the in from the input voltage by V d naught. So, the V d naught drop will be there across this diode and so at each point the output voltage is having a difference from the input voltage by the diode drop V d naught. So, these are the input and output waveforms assuming constant voltage drop model of the diode. Now, this output voltage as we see here is completely almost g this is 0 in the negative half cycle as well to a little portion inside also it is 0 that is because whenever it is less than 0 0.7 for silicon that is less than V d naught then output voltage will be 0. So, from this point you see that voltage becomes 0. So, basically here one complete time period of the input waveform if we consider that is capital T say then only for even less than T by 2 half of the time period we have conduction of the diode. But of course, this small region where till when it is output current is 0 that is very small. So, roughly approximately we can say that for half of the input waveform the output voltage will be 0. Now, if we want to find out what will be the average voltage V naught then we have to integrate this output voltage waveform within this time period. Now, that we will be doing now to get the average output voltage V naught. So, for that purpose we will be again assuming the diode to be ideal because as we have as I have mentioned here that you can see that if I exactly want to find out what is the output DC voltage then I cannot integrate between 0 and capital T by 2 because it is not exactly that because for a small portion we, we see that the current is not there that means 0 current. So, output voltage 0, but then for all practical purposes like in a rectifier circuit we can consider the diode to be ideal because we are mostly interested in knowing the rectification and do the analysis from that point of view. So, even though we are not exact at this point for integrating between 0 and T by 2 which is not exactly correct, but that we can do so. So, we will be now considering ideal diode that means we are further simplifying the model by ignoring V d naught as well as ignoring average resistance of the diode R d. Let us find out first from that approximate model what will be the output voltage V naught assuming the diode to be ideal. So, that we will be doing now and for that let us first consider 
again the input and output waveforms considering the diode to be ideal. So, that will be as shown here, it is the input waveform which is an AC waveform. So, it is V m sin omega t will be the expression for that AC waveform because we all know that this is the uh, well known expression for sinusoidal waveform of voltage which is V m sin omega t. Omega is the angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi f, f is in cycle per second or hertz and our power supply which we get domestically that is having 50 hertz as the supply frequency means f will be 50 cycle per second or hertz. So, now this waveform is input waveform V m sin omega t and output waveform considering the diode to be ideal is like this. So, now we will be uh, carrying out the analysis with this output waveform having one exactly one half cycle the diode will be conducting and the other half the diode will be off. So, we will be getting 0 voltage that means we are getting a pulsating DC this is called pulsating DC and with one half cycle off. So, let us do that analysis for finding out what will be the output voltage or average DC voltage. So, by V DC I am meaning that the output voltage which is the average DC voltage. So, for finding that out we have to integrate between this whole time interval 0 to capital T. So, if we integrate uh, in order to find out the average DC voltage 1 by whole time period T integration 0 to T V m sin omega T dt because this input and output waveforms have exactly the similar shape that is a sine wave. So, we can easily integrate it by this ideal assumption. So, this is a simple integration if you carry on that integration it will be equal to 1 by capital T V m within that integration if we do that sin omega t integration it will be minus cos omega t by omega between this uh, lower and upper limit 0 and capital T by 2. Here you have to note that because one half circle is having 0 voltage we are to integrate it between 0 and capital T by 2 because the other half is totally 0. So, we are further simplifying it by integrating it between 0 to capital T by 2. So, that will be giving this expression of minus V m by omega can be taken out omega into capital T then cos omega t which is in between the limits 0 and capital T by 2. So, that will be equal to putting the limit it will be cos omega capital T by 2 minus 1 that is equal to minus V m by now here we can substitute omega capital T is equal to 2 pi because 2 pi f is equal to omega that is that we all know. So, from that 2 pi f is equal to omega we can now f is equal to 1 by t. So, from that we find out that capital t into omega is equal to 2 pi. So, substituting that here it will be further boiling down to minus V m by 2 pi within bracket cos omega t you just substitute by 2 pi 2 pi by 2 minus 1. So, now we get cos of pi minus 1 in the bracket that is equal to cos pi minus 1. So, minus 1 minus 1 minus 2. So, finally, we get that is equal to V m by pi. So, in a half wave rectifier we have the output average DC voltage equal to V m by pi if you find out the value of 1 by pi it is 0 0.318. So, 0 0.318 V m will be the average DC value of the half wave rectifier. Here in the half wave rectifier we have seen one at disadvantage or one drawback of half wave rectifier is that in one half of the input waveform the output voltage is totally 0. That means what we are not getting this output wave or output voltage for one complete half uh, one uh, half cycle of the input waveform. So, this is not exactly what we want. So, we want that the output voltage should be a constant DC level. So, we will be going to another advanced rectifier 
which is known as full wave rectifier. So, it will be rectifying the whole input waveform that is the full wave will be rectified that means in both the half cycles we should get rectification. So, that is that is full wave rectifier which has advantage over half wave rectifier that we are going to discuss now. But before that we would like to know what will happen if we consider a practical consideration of diode drop of 0.7 volt. So, now if uh, we consider say silicon, silicon has a diode drop of 0.7 volt. So, now output voltage will be V i minus that drop. So, uh, v, uh, in output voltage V naught if we find out in this analysis whatever we have done using ideal diode, here instead of V m we will have to put V m minus 0.7 for silicon or if germanium it is 0.3. So, that drop will come within the bracket V m minus V d naught. So, finally, our expression for V d c or average voltage drop at the output the d c voltage will be equal to 0 0.318 V m minus V t. V t mean the threshold voltage or the diode drop or V d naught as we have named it. So, approximately we can write that output voltage DC voltage is 0 0.318 or 1 by pi into V m minus V t. Now, there is another important term to know that is the peak inverse voltage of the diode. Peak inverse voltage as we have mentioned or discussed earlier, it is the maximum or peak voltage that the diode can withstand when it is not conducting. That has an important uh, analysis because in order to not enter into the breakdown, we must always remember what is the peak inverse voltage of a diode. Because in the reverse bias condition, if you re recall when the reverse voltage is greater than the breakdown voltage, it will enter into the breakdown and it will be suddenly rising. But in all practicalities, we do not have or we should not overcome that peak inverse voltage. So, in this case if we consider this circuit again, now when the diode is not conducting in the, ne in the negative or uh, uh, negative half cycle of the input waveform, then what will be the voltage across it. So, that is the peak inverse voltage and you can very well see here it is nothing but the peak voltage of the input wave that is V m. So, V m is the P i V of this half wave rectifier circuit. Now, we will be considering a full wave rectifier which will be a better rectifier than a half wave rectifier. So, full wave rectifiers has uh, different configurations or circuits and let us consider first a bridge, rect bridge network that is bridge full wave rectifier. Having a bridge of or a network of diodes, there will be four diodes as arranged in this configuration as we can see here. So, there will be D 1, D 2, D 3, D 4, four diodes. Now, the input V i is an AC waveform. Let us consider sinusoidal. Now, if we consider a positive half cycle of the input waveform, then the conduction of which diodes will be taking place. The diodes which will be forward biased, those diodes will conduct. So, we will be applying say this input voltage having V m sin omega t. Now, output voltage that will be ob ob obtained across this resistance R which is V naught and it is denoted by this polarity. This is this side is positive, this side is negative. So, now when it is positive in the positive half cycle of the input voltage waveform, the red colored straight line will be showing the conduction of the diodes. The diodes D 2 and D 4 as you can see here will be forward biased. This is positive connected to P as well as this is also forward biased this diode. So, that is why the current path will be shown by this red line. The current will be flowing through D 2 and D 4. 
So, across this resistance R, this current will produce a voltage drop V naught. So, as it is a resistive drop, it will be following the input voltage waveform in shape. Of course, there will be a time lag in order to start the current because of this uh, uh, the threshold voltage of the diode. Practically, this will be the waveform. And in the negative half cycle, when this lower point is positive, upper point is negative of the input voltage waveform, then the green line will be showing the conduction of current because the diodes D3 and D1 will be now forward biased in the reverse uh, negative half cycle of the input voltage. So, the current will be flowing in this direction that is through D3, then, D, then for, through R and then through D1. So, the output voltage for the negative half cycle is this one. So, we get for both the, both the positive and negative half cycles of the input voltage, we get output voltage across this resistance. So, it is better than the half wave rectifier that we are getting both the half cycles, we are getting output waveform. So, in this case, if we want to find out what will be the output voltage or DC voltage, again we have to do the integration. But here, of course, while doing the integration, as we have output waveform for both the half cycles, the integration will be if we do 1 by t by 2 integration will be from 0 to t by 2. That means, we can take one half of the input waveform and we can integrate it. It will be similar for the other half also. So, this integration will finally give if we do this integration put down the limits and as well we, uh, we find out that omega capital T is equal to 2 pi. So, again substituting we get finally the output voltage average value is equal to 2 by pi into V m. This value is exactly twice that the, uh, than the output voltage, output voltage which we got in half wave rectifier. So, the average output voltage in a full wave rectifier is twice the average output voltage in a half wave rectifier. That is 0.6366 times V m, V m being the peak voltage of the input. So, here also for doing this analysis, we have assumed ideal diode approximation. Now, if we, if we consider a practical diode having cut in voltage of V D, then we have the average value 0.6366 Vm minus 2 Vd. Now, why 2 Vd will be coming? Because if you if we see the current part, the current will be flowing through in the positive half cycle, it will be flowing through D2, then R, then D4. Now, there is a drop here, there is a drop here also. So, two voltage drops will be coming into the picture. So, the diode drop V d will be will have to be multiplied by 2 that means V d plus V d. This 2 V d will have to be subtracted from the peak value of the input waveform to get the output voltage wave and that will have to be multiplied by of course, this 0.6366. So, for a practical diode we have this is the average value. Now, again if we find out the P i V of this uh, half full wave rectifier for each of the diodes, peak inverse voltage of each diode, you can find out when the diode is non-conducting, when one diode if I consider and consider when it is non-conducting, what will be the maximum voltage that is across it, that is the peak inverse voltage. So, if I consider it is a positive half cycle, then this D 2, D 4 are conducting and D 1, D 3 are non-conducting. So, what will be the voltage that will be applied across this D 1, because D 1 is non-conducting. That can be found out if we consider the two ends of this D 1 diode, what will be this voltage. Now, again ap applying if Kirchhoff's voltage law through this uh, mesh, then this voltage drop is nothing but V i minus this drop because this is one end and this is the other end. So, this drop is equal to 
v i minus this drop that is v i minus v d naught. So, peak inverse voltage of each diode you can you can see for other diodes also when they are non conducting the same p i v will be getting which is equal to v m minus v d naught. So, now here also we are not nearer to a constant DC voltage even now because what we are getting is a pulsating DC voltage like this is what we are getting, but then we want to get a constant voltage. Now, this is not obtained till now. Now, we have to now modify the circuit or we have to add something extra to get exactly a DC voltage. So, for that we will be going for another circuit that is that includes the filter circuit, but before that I will be discussing another type of uh, full wave rectifier that is center tap using center tap transformer. So, full wave rectifier using center tap transformer. Now, this transformer is a device which can transform or which can convert the voltage level. Input voltage level can be stepped down to a lower voltage level or it can be stepped up depending upon the turns ratio of the primary and secondary winding of a transformer. So, here a center tap transformer has the secondary side tapping at the center that means this portion of this or the upper portion of this secondary winding will have equal voltage to the lower portion. If this is V s this will be also V s and this is center which will be grounded they have exactly equal voltages we get at the secondary that is a center tap transformer it is tapping in tapping is at the center of the secondary. So, in this full wave rectifier this transformer which is center tapped is used to bring the desired to the, the input voltage to its desired value we use this transformer. So, here there are two diodes D 1 and D 2 circuit is like this uh, we are uh, getting the output voltage across this resistance which is V naught. So, now the conduction will be taking place when this is positive upper point is positive with respect to the center upper one diode will conduct and when the center is positive with respect to this that means this one this lower one if we consider if, it, if this is higher at a higher potential than this then this way the diode will conduct but the resistance through which the current will conduct in both the cases it will be in the same direction. So, that the polarity of the voltage which we get across this resistance will be in the same way. So, input voltage is V i and output voltage which is obtained across resistance will be pulsating DC as we are getting here for each half cycle you will be getting the voltage across this resistance. And what will be this peak inverse voltage across each diode in this case? So, if we consider this secondary side voltage V s, then V s is having a peak value say V m, then when this diode is non conducting that is in the case when this di upper diode upper diode D 1 is conducting, then the voltage across this two ends of this diode will be how much the total voltage across is secondary minus this drop. So, if one half is V s and peak value of one half is V m then total voltage peak value will be two times V m. So, two times V m minus V d naught that will be the peak inverse voltage in this center tap transformer which is a full level rectifier, but here we are employing two diodes instead of four diodes in the bridge rectifier. Now, in order to smoothen out the output voltage, we will be employing a capacitor that is a capacitor filter will be applied to smoothen out the DC voltage 
which we are getting without capacitor. That means we will have to get a constant DC level without any ripple, but till now whatever we have got in half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier is unipolar voltage no doubt, but it is not purely DC. So, to get a idea an ideal DC voltage we will be employing a filter circuit using a capacitor. Now, what will be achieved using a capacitor that we will have to see in the circuit. So, let us first consider half wave rectifier. So, half wave rectifier with capacitor filter will be this circuit where a capacitor is included across this resistance RL load resistance. Now, here of course, we will also consider ideal diode for simplicity. So, because we are in, uh, concerned about the analysis. So, let us consider an ideal diode where the cut-in voltage is 0 as well as the average resistance is also 0. So, now in the positive half cycle when this upper point is positive with respect to the lower point for the input voltage V i, the diode will conduct as it is forward biased and it will be charging this capacitance. So, the capacitance will be charged and this diode is having 0 resistance. So, the time required for charging the capacitance is almost 0 because instantly the capacitor will be charged, there will be no time lag. So, the capacitor will be charging to the peak value of the input voltage instantly and this will be Vc will be the output voltage this voltage across RL is nothing but the voltage across this capacitance. So, if the input voltage is V i, output voltage if we draw for a particular resistance RL say we are considering, then it will be first of all charging, the capacitor will be charging to the peak value of the input voltage. Now, when you notice the input voltage, it is sinusoidal, it is varying with time. So, from the peak value it is falling off. Now, if we consider the capacitance, the capacitance has already charged to the peak value Vm, but after this point peak point input voltage Vi is going down, but then if we consider the diode this cathode and anode and the cathode the capacitor voltage is being applied and the anode is the input voltage. Now, the capacitor voltage is V m peak value, but the P side anode is having V i which is less than the capacitor voltage after this peak point. If we consider this point for example, here the capacitor voltage is V naught which is equal to V m, but at this point the input voltage is falling down. So, this diode will be reverse biased and it will not be conducting. So, this circuit is off. So, now what will happen? The capacitor voltage will be discharging through this resistance RL. So, that is why this discharging is taking place shown by this green line. This, this capacitor is discharging through this resistance RL. Now, this discharging rate will be dependent upon the time constant which is RL into C. So, if we have a bigger time constant, it will take more and more time to discharge if we have lower resistance RL is a small value, then the time constant will be small. So, it will be falling off very soon. That means, the rate of discharging will be very fast. So, here the capacitor is discharging and discharging, but you see that input voltage is now at this point increasing here and after this point input voltage becomes higher than the capacitor voltage. So, input voltage is higher means this for the, the diode will be again forward biased. So, from this point it will be again forward biasing the diode since V i is greater than V c and the conduction of the diode will be taking place and therefore, the capacitor will be charged again charging will be taking place again after this point input voltage is lower than the capacitor voltage. So, discharging will be taking place. So, charging and discharging will be going on finally, giving a voltage which is having a ripple. It is not a constant voltage, but it will be having a ripple. So, 
this type of voltage you will be getting. Now, if we go on increasing the resistance RL ideally suppose so big that it is almost equal to infinity then of course, there will be no discharging at all and we will be getting a constant voltage which is of course, not practically uh, it is not true we cannot get an infinitely high voltage, but we will be getting more and more towards DC if we go on increasing the RL resistance load resistance capacitor is not changing capacitor we are fixing. Now, how much value we, we, we should choose uh, that the time cons about for the time constant that is time constant should be such that it should not decay appreciably when you consider the time period of the input voltage. So, if the input voltage has a say time period capital T then this time tau which is the time constant for the discharging circuit it should be sufficiently large compared with this time period of the input voltage. Then only we do not see much falling off of the output voltage and output will be almost uh, constant like a DC. So, you have to choose this capacitance uh, sorry the resistance RL value sufficiently larger to have a larger time constant. Now, if we consider the diode conduction how much time the diode will be conducting the diode will is conducting for a very small time only for this portion. So, the diode current is such red flowing for a very small time and, and then it will be becoming 0. So, it is called the surge current. So, if we consider this half wave rectifier and see the conduction of the diode the diode current will be like a surge it is suddenly it is increasing and then within a very short time it will be falling off also to 0. So, this diode conducts for a very very small time that is why it is called a surge current. Say for example, if we consider the whole time period only for a small portion T 1 it is conducting. Now, if we consider our power supply which has a 50 hertz frequency supply the time period will be 1 by f 1 by 50 hertz gives you 20 millisecond. So, the time constant of the discharging circuit in the rectifier should be reasonably high compared to T means we should choose value of tau very very greater as compared to 20 millisecond. So, it should be sufficiently high so that we get overall almost constant DC voltage it should not fall off drastically. Similarly, if we consider full wave rectifier with capacitor filter, there will be a capacitance which will be connected in parallel with the load resistance. So, here better approximation to DC will be obtained because if you consider the input voltage which is rectified in full wave rectifier in both the half cycles. Again, we are getting a discharging and charging phenomenon here. So, overall if we consider the output voltage what we get across this resistance which is V naught it will be like this waveform it is it is like a ripple this ripple voltage is because of this charging and discharging phenomena this voltage is called ripple voltage which is between one lower point this is the lowest point and the this is the peak point. So, in between these two points this voltage is known as V ripple peak to peak. So, this V ripple peak to peak is a measure of how effective your rectifier is. The more the better and better rectifier will be having lower and lower ripple. So, the measure for this uh, ripple factor is given by a factor R small r which is the ripple voltage in RMS divided by average DC value that is called the ripple factor. So, you should get a low ripple factor if you are you are interested in making a better rectifier. Now, what will be the output DC voltage finally, we will be getting after this uh, capacitor filter being included to know that as an approximation is done by considering the ripple voltage to be triangular voltage. So, that here actually if we consider a triangle uh, if we consider the ripple voltage and and assume it to be triangular it will be like this type of voltage. 
So, this triangular voltage if we consider and find out the DC value of the output V naught DC will be peak V m minus this drop that is the, the minus this V r divided by 2, V r divide V r peak to peak divided by 2. So, V ripple peak to peak divided by 2 is done to get the average DC value which is here shown by this black line. So, the average DC value is this peak value minus V ripple divided by 2 assuming triangular ripple. So, that the output DC DC level will be flowing towards the middle of this triangular voltage. So, it will be triangular voltage. So, the average DC level is through the middle that is why V m minus V r peak to peak by 2 gives you the DC voltage for this full ever rectifier with capacitor filter. Now, if we consider the whole conduction and non-conduction of the diode, the diode is conducting only for a very small portion that is for a very small time T1 and it is non-conducting and it is only because of discharging of this capacitor that we are getting the output voltage, it is for say capital T2. T2 is the non-conduction time, T1 is the conduction time and the whole time for this half wave rectifier is T by 2 that means half of the input voltage time period. So, without much violation we can assume that T by 2 is equal to almost equal to T 2. Because this T 1 is very small we can approximately say that T by 2 the whole time from this point to this point half of the time period of the input voltage that is equal to the non-conduction time T 2. If we assume that we can now find out an important relation because during discharging if we consider what will be this uh, output voltage waveform we know from capacitor discharging formula that the output voltage for a discharging capacitor will be given by the peak value into e to the power minus T by capital R capital C this is the time constant R C is the time constant. Now, at the end of discharging as you can see when it completely discharge uh, when it completely ends its discharging period it comes to this value from this value it falls down to this value. So, this voltage is nothing but the ripple voltage peak to peak. So, we can write here that this at the end of discharge interval V m minus V r which is the output voltage because if we see here the voltage which will be finally, we will be getting after discharging in this voltage. What is this voltage? V m minus V ripple. So, V m minus V ripple is equal to the voltage after this discharging period that is equal to V m into e to the power minus T by 2 divided by R c. Here I am using that approximation again because R c is very very greater than T then we can write down this expression e to the power minus T by 2 R c equal to 1 minus T by 2 R c. This exponential this power series exponential series e to the power minus x equal to 1 minus x plus x square by factorial 2 etcetera. Here if x is very small like this in this case this T is very very less as compared to R c that we have assumed only then it will be practically a good rectifier. So, in that case only keeping up to the first order that means up to 1 minus x we can write and others because square of the smaller term will be more and more smaller. So, we can ignore this term. So, it will be approximately possible to write this e to the power minus t by 2 r c equal to 1 minus t by 2 r c. So, now putting down this value here we get V m minus V r equal to V m into 1 minus t by 2 r c we have approximated for this exponential term. Then we get V r equal to V m t by 2 r c V m V m cancel. So, this term will be remaining and we know the time period is equal 1 by frequency. So, we can write now V r that is the ripple voltage equal to 
V m by 2 f R C replacing T by 1 by f. So, now what is this expression? This expression actually gives a relation between the ripple voltage and the peak input voltage at its frequency and the time constant. So, from this analysis we can again find out the average DC value also because if we look into the capacitor it is discharging at a constant rate of current of I DC say then when discharging it will be losing the charge equal to current into time that is I D C into T that will be the charge lost by the capacitor while discharging. So, the change in the capacitor voltage because of this discharging is I D C into T 2 by C that is charge by capacitance that will be the change in the voltage. A change in the voltage is what? Change in the voltage is nothing but the ripple voltage V R. So, V R is equal to I D C into T 2 by capital C again assuming the same thing that is T 2 equal to almost equal to capital T by 2 or 1 by 2 F then we can write down ripple voltage equal to V I D C divided by 2 F C replacing T 2 by capital T by 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 F. So, this becomes the ripple voltage expression and so we can write about the V D C D C voltage or output average voltage equal to V m minus V r by 2 that we have just now derived and now substituting for V r by this expression we get output D C voltage equal to V m minus I D C by 4 F C this 2 will be making it 4 F C. So, this relation gives you the expression for output DC voltage to the I DC value, peak value of the input voltage, frequency of the input voltage and capacitance. Now, from this analysis basically we have seen different type of rectifiers, half wave rectifier, then full wave rectifier then half wave rectifier with capacitor filter as well as full wave rectifier with capacitor filter. Now, when you do not use capacitor, we were getting the output voltage as unipolar DC, but it had ripples like it was it, it was not uh, perfectly DC, it was unipolar, it was it can be said to be pulsating DC, it is like a pulsating DC, but then this is not a good rectifier. So, we had to use a capacitor filter to smoothen out the pulsating DC to make it more and more nearer to a perfect DC voltage. So, for that after introducing the capacitance in both the half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier because of the charging and discharging phenomenon taking place in the capacitor we were getting a ripple which will be making it more like a DC voltage. We had a DC like voltage not exactly DC till now also it is not uh, perfectly right to say that it is DC, but it is more DC like voltage with of course a ripple on it. So, this ripple will be actually determining how much rectification we are being able to uh, get if we get more, more, more and more higher and higher ripple voltage that means it will be not a good rectifier. If this ripple voltage can be made lesser and lesser so that we get flatter and flatter output voltage which will be more towards a DC level ideally. So, we will be getting a better and better uh, rectifier. So, in order to do that we should choose the time constant of the discharging circuit R into C judiciously. So, for that we have to see what is the input voltage frequency and that, that will be giving you a measure how you will have you will be choosing the capacitance value that is input voltage frequency will give the time period. So, compared to that time period we must have the R C value or time constant considerably larger. So, that the overall effect is not seen in the output voltage overall effect of this discharging is not cl uh, clear or it is uh, not very much 
drastic that we can achieve by choosing a higher time constant. Now, we can do one example. This example is a center tapped full wave rectifier. This circuit is a center tap transformer having two diodes. So, this is the full wave rectifier. So, in this circuit you have been told that it should deliver 0 0.1 ampere and 15 volt leverage to a load. This V naught should be 15 volt leverage and the DC current which will be delivering to the output load is, is 1.1 ampere. Now, the ripple voltage is to be no larger than 0.4 volt peak to peak. That restriction is given. Input signal is a 120 volt RMS value, root mean square value is given of the input voltage at 60 hertz frequency and diode drop is 0.7 volt. And you are to determine the required turns ratio of transformer and the diode peak inverse voltage rating and ignore diode forward resistance. So, in this circuit, now try this example. Here, a center tap full wave rectifier is shown, which is to deliver 0 0.1 ampere and 15 volt average to a load. Now, the ripple voltage is to be no longer no larger than 0.4 volt peak to peak. It is given to you that it should not be greater than 0.4 volt peak to peak. Now, the input signal VI is 120 volt RMS at 60 hertz frequency. Diode drop is given as 0.7 volt. Now, you are to determine the turns ratio of the transformer and the diode PIV. Now, you have to ignore diode forward resistance. So, to solve this problem, let us do again, uh, draw again the circuit. It will be having a transformer in the input circuit. It is a center tap transformer having voltages Vs and Vs in the secondary say. This point is positive with respect to this point ground this point is positive with respect to this point. And now, you have two diodes D 1 and D 2 and this is the capacitance across R, this voltage is V naught. Now, this average voltage DC voltage is given as it is uh, 15 volt. Now, what is this average voltage we know P s max this voltage minus V d naught minus V ripple we have got this expression for full leg rectifier along with capacitor filter. This is peak to peak. Now, assuming triangular ripple we have uh, analyzed it. So, V s max can be found out. So, V x max is V naught average plus V d naught plus V ripple peak to peak by 2. Put down these values whatever is given V 15 volt it is this is given as 0.7 volt and V ripple is not to be larger than 0.4 volt. So, we take this maximum value. So, this gives 15.9 volt is the V s max. Now, you are to find out the transformer ratio. This transformer ratio is say n 1 is to n 2. Number of turns in primary to number of turns in secondary, the whole secondary is n 1 is to n 2 is called turns ratio. You are to find turns ratio. Now, for that we must know what is the RMS value because RMS value and peak value there are two uh, generally two ratings uh, are de de defined are denoted. So, if you want to find out the transformer ratio n 1 is to n 2. So, n 1 is to n 2 is nothing but n 1 is to n 2 is nothing but V input by V in the secondary whole secondary is having two V s, but both must be either RMS or peak. So, let us take the RMS value this 2 must be in conformity. If you take RMS both of them, them must be RMS. Now, 
this V s max we know. So, what will be V as R m s? V s max by peak value by root 2 is R m s value, V s max we have found out 15.9 by root 2 that is 11.24 volt. So, turns ratio can be found out n 1 is to n 2 is V i R m s by 2 V s R m s. The whole secondary if we look into the whole is 2 V s. So, this will be primary voltage by secondary voltage. Now, primary voltage is given as input voltage is 120 volt R m s. So, 2 into 11.24 V s R m s that gives you 5.34 as the turns ratio. Now, P i V of the diode can be found out. If we look into the circuit, what will be P i V? 2 V s peak value minus this drop V d naught will be the peak inverse voltage of the non-conducting diode. So, P i V is 2 V s max minus V d naught. So, 2 into 15.9 V s max is 15.9 minus 0 0.7 volt drop is given to you 31.1 volt. So, this is the P i V and the turns issue we have found. So, in this way we can solve this problem and whatever you do you must assume either the constant voltage drop model or ideal drop, ideal diode. So, in this example it is given that it is constant voltage drop. So, we can be proceeding like this. So, in today's class we have discussed about rectification which is an important application of diode which you will be finding useful in all electronic circuits because electronic circuits require a DC voltage mostly to be applied and that can be obtained by a power supply after rectifying a AC voltage source.